You're listening to the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. Inspiration for you as you walk by abounding faith, hope, and love and live your God-given dreams. Welcome to the third episode of the second season of the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Gavilanes, and you are in for such a treat. Today, I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite memories from my evangelism days in New York City of all places. Man, did we have such a great time with my evangelism friends and also taking out some students. We would go downtown to Union Square and oh my, our first visit was quite an experience. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Are you ready? I sure am. This memory is so special to me that I blogged about it a couple of years ago and it's also in my new book, By Faith, Adventures and Reflections on Walking with God Here and Abroad. It's called Viking Hunter. Shortly after I came back from Brazil, God allowed my friends Christine, Vernon, Juan, and me to take an evangelism class at our church based on a popular video series. Us four, as I affectionately call us, already had evangelism experience under our belt, so we were actually students who were going to be quickly turning around and training others. As part of the class, we went on our first evangelism outing to Union Square Park on a Friday evening to practice the skills we had been learning throughout the weeks. Initially, we all split up to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, but I didn't fare so well as I started talking to a guy and halfway through our conversation, his girlfriend came up to us. I was so concerned she might have the wrong idea about what I was doing that I lost my train of thought and only gave him the law and pointed out his sins but forgot to mention the good news that we have a savior in Jesus. I saw that Christine was free, so I went to partner with her. We found another fellow to talk to when all of a sudden we spotted him. Out of nowhere, a guy dressed as a Viking with a mask, horns on his helmet, and spikes started crossing the street and was headed right in our direction. Christine had been in the middle of sharing the gospel with the dude we were standing with. Later on, she shared that all she could think was that the devil himself was headed our way. All she could do was keep preaching the word. I just tried to remain calm. After all, we were in Union Square on a Friday night. There are always tons of characters there. Thankfully, he walked by us without any incident. After we were done, we went to check on the guys. Juan soon joined us, but Vernon was in the middle of sharing the gospel with a group of people who seemed to be hanging on his every word. Christine went over to talk to some of the teens standing by Vernon, leaving Juan and me to our own devices. Juan and I were the loose cannons of the group, so we weren't going to stand still for too long. We were there for just a few minutes when I spotted him again. There was the Viking, except this time he was sitting by himself smoking a cigarette. As I saw him sitting there, I thought, well, if he really is the devil incarnate, then we should go preach to him too. So without any further thought, I said to Juan, let's go over to him, to which Juan immediately replied, okay. As we were walking over to him, I suddenly realized I had no idea what to say. So when we were just steps away from the Viking, Juan and I quickly decided he should be the one to talk. Perfect. He was the veteran Green Beret and Master Sergeant in the U.S. Army. I, on the other hand, was not. I was just in the zone, which I can only describe as being filled with Holy Ghost boldness as well as a little touch of crazy. How else can I explain going out and evangelizing in New York City and abroad? Thankfully, Juan eased his way into a conversation with the Viking and suddenly, to our surprise, he relaxed enough to literally lift up his mask so we could see him face to face. Instantly, the intimidating Viking became just another young guy who needed to be reminded that God loves him. He shared how he had just finished one job and was on his way to another job where I suppose he is required to wear the costume. He mentioned that he did grow up going to church. We chatted for a bit and I was thrilled I got to pray for him at the end of our conversation. Now I can't say that I'd go up to every Viking I see, but I am so thankful that God reminded me that night to look past a person's exterior to see the lost sheep inside. There are lost and hurting sheep all around us. Do you see them? They are in your home, work, school, neighborhood, etc. Why not ask God to show you whom he would like you to reach out to with a kind word, smile, prayer, or invite to your church. That story still makes me smile when I think about how intimidating that guy looked when I first saw him 
and then how friendly he became after he lifted up his mask so that we could talk to him and pray for him. I'm just amazed at how God can transform someone even within a few minutes. I think it may seem a little scary to go up to strangers and talk to them and pray for them, but in this instance, because we were prayed up, because we were with a team, because we had been training, and because it was our goal to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, with whoever came across our path, that night was so special, and that moment has become a favorite memory. Like I said, our evangelism excursions were such a delight. They were great times, great memories. I look forward to going on more outreaches in New York City and other places. But for right now, I hope this story encourages you to reach out to that person in front of you. Again, it doesn't mean that you have to take a plane or go very far. Just take a look at your circle. See what friend, what relative, what coworker the Lord is placing in front of you and on your heart. And pray and then reach out to that person. You never know exactly what they're going through and you actually don't even need to know what they're going through, but you can go to them and say, can I pray for you? You might be surprised by how people respond. There are hurting people all around, whether they're at your job, in your neighborhood, on outreaches. They can be young and old. They can be rich or struggling. They can be male or female. I pray that God would direct you to the right person and give you the right words. That's what he says in his Bible, that he'll give us the words to speak and that we should be ready at all times to give a reason for the hope that we have in Jesus. If you'd like to read more stories about people that I've met on the streets in New York City, as well as during five short-term missions trips to five different countries, then I invite you to take a look at By Faith, Adventures and Reflections on Walking with God Here and Abroad. By Faith is available on Amazon and barnesandnobles.com. I pray that you're encouraged by the stories that you read in By Faith and that you are reminded about how big God is and how he is sovereign over all the countries and all the different nations, and he is present there as well. Again, you don't have to travel very far to make a difference, and I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray that God would give you the courage and the strength to share about your faith, and it can be as simple as just sharing a short testimony about what your life was like before Christ, how you met Jesus, and how your life has changed since then. I'd like to pray that God will use you right where he has placed you for such a time as this. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you order our steps and you have already ordained good works for us to do. I thank you that you put people on our hearts and minds. You also put people in our path, Father, whether we've known them for years or just a couple of hours. I pray, Father, that you would give us the strength and the courage to share about Jesus and how Jesus has changed our life. Father, I thank you that you choose to include us in your work here on earth. I pray that your kingdom would come, your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven, and I thank you that you call us to be your ambassadors, your witnesses, your mouthpieces to testify about you and to point people to you, Jesus. I thank you that your Holy Spirit gives us the boldness and the courage that we need at the right time and the right hour, and that the Holy Spirit gives us the right words to say. I pray that you would use us as the salt and light that you've called us to be. I thank you that you know exactly what city, what town, what state, what country you've placed us in. And I thank you that we can be part of that story that you're writing here on earth. I thank you, Father, and I ask us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I hope that you'll stay in the word and really soak in the Bible. And as you meditate on and memorize and really reflect on the Bible verses that you're reading, it will be stored inside of you and at the right time, the Holy Spirit can bring it to remembrance. That's part of his job. He brings verses and stories and testimonies to our memory right at the right moment. So I pray that you won't be nervous or scared. And even if you are, it's okay. You can still share a short story about how God has changed your life and what a difference he's made in your life. And there's no telling how that will inspire and impact that person that you meet at the gym, at work, at school, during your commute, or maybe even a relative that you've known for years. Amen. So if you'd like to read more encouraging stories from different outreaches that I've been on here and abroad, go ahead and pick up a copy of By Faith, Adventures and Reflections on Walking with God here and abroad on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. I look forward to encouraging you next time. God bless. You've been listening to the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. For more encouragement on your faith journey, visit AboundingFaith.com and follow Abounding Faith on social media.